I'd like to uh, get everyone seated if we could. We're going to get started here in a minute. In accordance with open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. Everyone, please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you everyone for being here tonight, especially our guests from Andover. Thank you for making the trip up here. Especially, uh, I know you had an early, earlier meeting. Um, yeah, yeah, no, we, we understand. We have our busy season coming ahead of us with our budgets, so. Um, so I thought I'd just maybe start things off just to reiterate to the public why we're having this meeting this evening. To make sure everyone home listening and uh, make sure we get it for the record is that we did attend your town meeting, your special town meeting, and unfortunately there was a, a change in your warrant article requested by the voters, and it did pass, which sort of forced us to be here this evening to, to understand the way forward. And the one area was in an opt-out that we, that we previous, in previous negotiations with our subcommittee members was taken off the table because uh, for all, this board, unanimously, that was the biggest concern for us, and we know from your subcommittee members, uh, they, they understood that and we appreciate that. But unfortunately, that got changed by the voters in, in Andover, and, uh, and here we are today. Um, I would, if you wouldn't mind, Mr. Scalato, just introducing your board. Sure. Uh, I'm Paul Scalato, the chairman of the board, Alex Vespoli, who is the vice chair, and Laura Gregory, who was on the original uh, negotiating team with us. Unfortunately, we have one member who is uh, in New York on business and another one with a, with a, top, a, a family member uh, who some, for some reason he had to, could not make it. Andrew Flanagan, our town manager, and John yeah. Mangiarotti, our, our deputy town manager. Thank you. So I thought the goal for tonight's meeting, the way we uh, put it together, would be to Give you, you know, now we know we have this issue on the table, which uh, is an opt-out that we have to address. And you know, the agreement we had in principle, we didn't have the opt-out, and now we do. And we we're hoping this evening you had an opportunity to come and speak to us and tell us what your thoughts are for a solution to that, if there is a solution to that, um, and the best way forward and how we deal with it. So I'd like to turn it over to you. We're here to listen this evening. That's the, the main thing. We want to understand what your thoughts are and in a path forward if there is one. Sure. Well, Paul, you might want to just move the mic closer to you. So, uh. so let me just open by saying, I mean, uh, Andrew, we've, we've, met, we've been meeting a little bit, and Andrew has been meeting with, with his staff on the side, and we've been talking about a path moving forward. So I'm going to turn that over to Andrew so that he can, he can um, uh, detail that. But let me just say, let me express to you that this board um, is unanimous in our desire and our hope that we can come to an agreement. I think we think it's uh, very, very beneficial for both towns, um, and we believe that uh, there is a path forward, and we'd like to be able to. We're here tonight to to, to, to certainly explore that, and we are um, hopeful that you know, by the time we leave here, that we can at least have some, some next steps go moving forward. So I'm going to move it over and turn it over to Andrew Flanagan for He's got his own mic. I got my own. Uh, thank you, Chairman Salafia, and thank you, uh, Chairman Prisco, and uh, the members of the North Reading uh, Board for having us this evening. Uh, I'm pleased we're all uh, using the same uh, theme word, pathway. Uh, the document I presented to the Board at 5 o'clock, the title was A Pathway Forward. Um, because I think, uh, certainly speaking for Andover, that is uh, really what the ultimate goal is for us uh, as we uh, continue on a path that we started 
uh, years ago uh, at this point. Um, you uh, were at our special town meeting, um, so we don't have to rehash the outcome, but uh, since that day, we've really worked uh, to try to turn in what was a disappointment into an opportunity. Um, it was a disappointment uh, for, the, for us. Uh, we put a lot of hours into it, as I think all of you know. Um, and uh, we now, moving forward, uh, would like to see it uh, turn into the opportunity that I think we all believe it can be. Um, so what have we done since then? Um, we've met internally a number of times, um, really focusing on two things. Um, one, in response to the concerns of North Reading, and one responsive uh, to the concerns of Andover ratepayers. Um, with regard to North Reading, um, we've heard you loud and clear uh, the concern of permanency. Um, I tried to make that clear uh, to the Andover Town meeting. Um, we understand uh, that concern, um, and we've uh, taken a shot at coming up with some scenarios that may be acceptable uh, in the appropriate forum to discuss with you. Um, and then we've talked about internally um, some of the, how we meet the concerns of our ratepayers uh, in a way and a fashion that would be acceptable uh, to the parties, the parties of course being um, Andover and North Reading. So we've been having those discussions. The Board of Selectmen here in Andover have met uh, three times. Um, we've uh, received the feedback and have worked that into our internal discussions um, as we've uh, talked about our pathway uh, forward. So uh, based on that, um, we looked at really in silos, what are our options? Um, there are uh, two votes. There's a vote um, from your town meeting to file a home rule petition, and there's a vote from our town meeting uh, to file a home rule petition that of course looks different than yours. Um, so based on the input I've received from board members, I'm inclined, and I've uh, I discussed this with the board at 5 o'clock, um, I'm inclined uh, to request that the Board of Selectmen in Andover reopen the warrant on Monday, uh, this Monday, uh, and submit a warrant article for reconsideration or consideration, because it will look much more like uh, the initial article for the annual town meeting, which is scheduled uh, for April 30th. I know that is a, a sensitive date for you, uh, as it is the date that was outlined, uh, I believe, to your town meeting uh, when we were in attendance when this was initially presented uh, at the high school. Um, what our goal is, um, is to be able to discuss language uh, with you to, de to determine uh, general parameters that are acceptable to both communities um, and then move forward with seeking approval. Having two consistent um, home rule petitions and be able to stand by uh, the general terms um, and conditions that we worked years on. Um, and thank you to all the people in the room who spent uh, a great deal of time uh, um, working on those and then really focus in on um, the outstanding issues which is there any appetite to um, talk about um, we've discussed opt-outs we've talked about renewals we've talked about all different concepts um, that we could consider that protect you and help you achieve permanency we heard um, from I believe every one of our selectmen and please correct me if I'm wrong uh, this evening uh, that uh, there's an openness to permanency. Um, and uh, I think that's uh, unanimous on our side, and it's just how we do it. And I think we have some creative approaches to meet the demands from uh, the demands or the concerns of our residents. We are afforded um, some information today that we weren't um, when we headed into the special town meeting. We've relived the special town meeting, we've watched the tape over and over and over, and we've heard the concerns, we've listened to concerns, and we think we can answer the questions uh, that we didn't anticipate uh, that evening. Um, they were well thought out. Um, we, as an administration, are very much committed to a grassroots um, public outreach education campaign, um, uh, morning, afternoon, and evening, um, that's aggressive, that's thorough, that meets the demographics of the community, um, and that would begin. Uh, immediately. So uh, what I would like to do this evening um, is ask uh, the North Reading, respectfully ask the uh, North Reading Board uh, to consider a meeting uh, as soon as possible uh, in a negotiating team fashion like we've had and that worked well um, and begin working on really what I see as the missing piece. Um, we're sensitive to your timeline. We have a timeline too. Um, I think we could talk about our timeline. Uh, if uh, that is of interest to you, but we're certainly prepared uh, and are uh, willing to align the appropriate resources to move uh, as quickly as necessary. Um, so 
that is uh, where uh, we stand. Um, Selectman Gregory, I don't know if uh, you have anything to add. Um, I just wanted to add a few things. Um, first of all, uh, I want to apologize. Uh, I think that all of us were frustrated with how things played out at our town meeting, and I think there were a lot of statements that weren't, frankly, very neighborly. And um, there were concerns by individuals uh, in town which were valid concerns, but I think they weren't characterized in a way that was particularly friendly, and I apologize for that. Um, <clears throat> I'd also like to note that uh, I did get up on, spoke at the, at the pro mic and uh, argued uh, on my own behalf that the town should do this, and I continue to think that this is a great deal for the town of Andover and the Andover ratepayers, and I think it's a good deal for um, North Reading as well, and I'm hopeful that we can come to a, a resolution of the difficulties that were created by our town meeting um, and that there are ways that we can address some of those concerns while still giving uh, North Reading what you need. So I hope that we can do that and I thank you for your willingness to speak to us tonight and I continue to be optimistic that we can try and work together to get a benefit that will be good for both of our towns and our residents. Um, going forward. Thank you. And I will just add, um, there's a lot of energy behind this in our community right now. Um, and I think uh, everybody at this table can attest to that. There's a lot of energy behind the idea and the concept of uh, a deal with North Reading. I didn't see it so much uh, the first time around, but it's certainly there uh, now. And uh, I think we have a real opportunity to capture that uh, leading into the annual town meeting. Um, so we've uh, had the uh, great fortune of providing uh, your town with water for the past 44 years uh, and hopefully we can, well, not us, but uh, there'll be people here to celebrate it at 144 years. So uh, thank you. I think also uh, uh, Selectman Schultz attended our meeting this evening and, and uh, I'm sure you heard that our board was very, is very, very behind, all five of us. Uh, very behind, even even Dan from, from Colin from New York. Um, wanting to give you the permanence that you, you need and want while we um, uh, try to address some of the things that, that our, our community is uh, is dealing with. So uh, it's just, I guess it's important that you know that we, not only the board, but uh, as Andrew said, there's an awful lot of energy and, and uh, uh, impetus behind um, us all coming to an agreement. So I, I guess I have somewhat disappointment tonight because <coughs> when we put this together, uh, maybe I set myself up for disappointment. Maybe there's just a lack of communication and understanding from our part. We thought we were going to get a proposal from you tonight that would give us a path to get to where we want it to be. And so just to make sure I understood what you're proposing is you're asking to go back to another town meeting and ask us to wait for that. You're going to reopen the article up for another town meeting. You're open. Your openness for permanency, but you're still going to keep an opt out on the table, and you're going to start a public outreach campaign that you didn't start before. And you're requesting more subcommittee meetings after over three years of subcommittee meetings. We're going to just continue subcommittees. That's what's being proposed for this meeting tonight. Is that the approach that we're looking I for? Think, I think, uh, Chairman. Um, we, we've got the town meeting vote in place, so we're operating under that. So if I think the point is anticipating if we can come up with something that may be different from that proposal that we go back to our town meeting because we can't just, I think we're in a situation, we can't just change it without having the ratification from town meeting. So we were looking to say, okay, if we can come up with something that okay changes that because we understand that that's a uh, an issue for your board and I can certainly appreciate that based on the permanency that we're looking at and forward and saying okay optimistically that we can come up with something that would be uh, favorable to both communities then to do that procedurally mechanically we'd have to go back to our town meeting to change that vote or to get a vote in the affirmative on that so that's that's from a timeline perspective not you know we're also uh, because we, we'd have to right um, if it was out or it was changed or modified in any way we'd still have to go back to our voters and, and get that get that reboted 
Um, so that that's the that's the uh, the discussion that Andrew brought around made allusions to that. Um, the other thing that uh, we could do is call a special town meeting at any time, given the whatever the parameters are. And it came up actually in our meeting tonight, mm -hmm. but one of our outspoken citizens brought that up and said, you know, if we need to do something sooner, you know, we could call a special town meeting. The board of selectmen can do that with so many days' notice. If you know, if you if you look at the timeline, because I think our our annual town meeting is set for the. Uh, Thirtieth of April. So just looking at the time. So that's that's the we're looking in advance and saying, okay, if we if we did come to an agreement that was different, because I assume it would be based on the response, and you were we heard the feedback, and you were at our meeting, that if we can come to something that would change that materially, we have we'd be obligated to go back and get that get that vote. From our town meeting, and procedurally, what would happen is it would match your your town meeting vote. So we would have both town meeting votes <coughs> would would work exactly the same. But so, okay. we would add <coughs> to our town meeting a list of the term sheet that we already have that we've worked very very hard on for for many many months and to your point years. Um, all we need, we, and we have it to Alex's point, that we have to address that one point, which is an opt out. We have to address that in our town. So that's what we're hoping that this little bit of time, where we have some 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 subcommittee, we could have additional subcommittee meetings to try to work those just that one thing out. We would add the term sheet with the new propo new proposal worked out at. At, uh, during this time period and bring that to town meeting so you wouldn't have to go to your town meeting because it would your, yours would still stand ours would be a 99 year agreement but with this this uh, time uh, this term sheet added to it so the strategy would be you're going to go back to another town meeting with the initial approach that we had already agreed on going to, to this previous special town meeting mm -hmm. and try it one more time with the with with change, I mean, yeah. we'd have we'd what change? something that was amenable to to both parties. Which and what change is that? Well, to address the out, right? To address the issue that came up. So when we went to your special town meeting, the the opt the opt out wasn't clause there wasn't there. All. Wasn't there at all. So what you're saying is you want to go back again one more time with the same terms and conditions and the agreement in principle that we had, and try it one more time. No, no, but we would add that one if in that time period. We would be working with working together to agree on an out clause of some sort that is agreeable to you and to us. Okay. So uh, and that would be added to That's it. just one. Okay. Okay. Right. So it's clear. So an opt out clause will be part of what you go to your town meeting with. I think our town meeting was, was we, our clear about town meeting vote does not have an up, uh, opt right. out clause. The, the discussion would be I don't know if the, 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 the Warren article would not uh, reference an opt out clause um, or any language that differs from yours. What it would allude to is the same language that authorizes the Board of Selectmen to enter into terms and conditions. Those terms and conditions would include any language with regard to termination, um, any uh, risk provisions, any language that would be typical of an IMA, um, similar or not dissimilar to the existing IMA. So, what we would do to our town meeting, with our town meeting is just reference those before they take the vote. But the language of the Warren article would be no different than yours. Thank you for explaining. So you, the terms of the, of the agreement won't be necessary in the Warren article, but the terms that we're going to be negotiating between the subcommittee and then voted against us jointly will include an opt-out of some sort that's going to be negotiated between the two subcommittees is the strategy you're proposing. Correct. The the town meeting would be authorizing the board of select. So you're asking us to accept an opt-out tonight. That's the strategy. I'm requesting or respectfully requesting that um, you be willing to come back to the table in a format that is similar to what uh, has worked in the past and discuss some language whether it be an opt-out, a renewal clause. I don't know exactly what it's looked like. We've come up with some ideas that we'd like to share with you, yeah. um, but the exact language, um, 
necessarily an opt-out. I don't know exactly what it'll look like when the parties come together, but have a conversation. Thank you for clarifying. Okay. Questions? Yeah, Mr. Chair, if I may. When I attended you guys' meeting earlier tonight, there was talk, and it might have been Selectman Kowalski, so I, I may, may not have been one of you three guys. There was talk about not having an opt-out, but having renegotiation points at maybe 10-year intervals or what have you during that 99-year term. But wouldn't that kind of be the same thing as an opt? What if we didn't agree on a renegotiation? What would be the mechanism for settling that dispute? To me, that would be the same thing as an opt-out. But the different term was used. I was just wondering, maybe I'd understand it. What was the yeah, thought was, behind that? That was Selectman Kowalski. Okay. So I'm not, I, I took I'm not I, I took that as a potential renewal, and um, I will follow up with Selectman Kowalski when I have an opportunity to. It just seemed like one of the yep. same to me. Just called something different. Well, it seems to, it seems to me that that. The idea of that, I think that Dan was suggesting as a more general idea, but if, if it were something we could discuss, for example, what parameters would be renegotiated, it might not be everything, it could be a portion of it, um, or things like that, that, or in the form of a renewal, like ways that w we could work with it, sort of put our you know brainstorming hats on to figure out different options that might work for the two towns to allow us to go forward. Um, while recognizing that we need to get a town meeting vote in Andover um, and that there are concerns about the length of the, of the contract um, as, as it stands. So I think if we can come up with a few things that would work for both parties that we could hopefully convince our voters to go along with. I also want to say that um, I have certainly been receiving and I believe all the selectmen have um, a number of communications from individuals in Andover who are very eager for us to enter into this contract with you. So there may have been some negative voices that you've heard, but there have certainly been lots of positive voices. You heard a few uh, today at, at our meeting. Um, but negative voices at town meeting? No, no, at our, at our, <laughs> um, so I think there, there is a desire and maybe a better understanding of the implications of the deal now than there was that evening, um, which is too bad that it didn't happen in the right time frame, but we're uh, um, optimistic that we can work with a lot of the people in town and get them educated on the, the particulars so that when we go to our vote, we'll be able to be successful. Mr. Masseri. Correct me if I'm wrong, but at your town meeting, it seemed like a lot of people really didn't understand some of the details of the preliminary agreement. And one I thought was very significant, and why maybe people were saying we have to have an opt out, was that it wasn't really expressed that, with the exception of the first 10 years, as the Andover water rate increased, we would get billed accordingly at the 95% of whatever the, the rate is on that given year, past year 10. And it seemed like that whole piece was missing with people thinking that, you know, we're going to get stuck and if the water rate goes up, no, after anything is even going to gain even more. That's how it came across to me. I, I, I would agree that that was absolutely wasn't. wrong. That wasn't captured in the discussion. I, I think there was an assumption that it may be fixed over time, and that's a perfect example of something we learned through the discussion and will be, uh, you know, paramount in our uh, educational materials as we move forward. So, Michael, can I continue? Yes, please continue, Mr. Chair. So, uh, I've been involved directly with negotiations uh, associated with the five-year term, which took us. And the intent at the time was a 20-year term. It took several years, and we got nowhere. And then, uh, you know, when we started talking about, well, can we buy all the water from Andover? And we were told flatly at the time, no, which resulted in the five-year agreement. But it was, it's one of the other issues that goes through our mind is, we want to get this done, move forward. Both communities clearly will benefit. So how did we get stuck with what we get stuck with, and is there a clear path to go beyond? You've got a, an election coming up. There could be a change in the board. They may come in with different ideas. Right at the time when we're trying to close on this thing, we set originally an April date to make a final decision. And you know, we're, here we are tonight. And, uh, we may make a decision to 
to go forward with MWRA at our next meeting. Uh, and uh, you know, how do we how do we get <coughs> to where we are to something forward that our entire board can can buy into? And what are the risks, and how do we deal with them? Because it's nothing to say that when you take it to a special town meeting or your regular town meeting coming up, that the town meeting is going to buy into it. And, uh, you know, I think that message, the information didn't get out there in time, and it wasn't spoken to at the meeting. I've been on the board here for 14 years, and I, I think uh, some of you have been to our town meeting, and uh, you know, we try to be very prepared, and the board will get up and speak for anything that it's put in there that it wants. We don't always win, but we clearly make an attempt to get the community to understand why we're doing it. And that was the biggest disappointment I had at your town meeting. I think initially we probably should have many, we should have had several more. We did have uh, what we call a mid-year review and it was an extensive <coughs> meeting uh, and 50% of the meeting was all North Reading Water and it was all articulated in, in a very, in a much more relaxed atmosphere than obviously in a, in a special town meeting. So it, yeah, we, we need to learn from that and we have two months in which to do that. Uh, those two months, you know, we, we would be, believe me, we learned a, uh, that we need to go to on an extensive education uh, piece to, to the community. Many more um, meetings than we had. Now, we had several board selected meetings that people go to and can watch, but we still had to have, we should have more special meetings. We should have had no question about it. But it, it's certainly our hope that, that this mechanism we believe that we can come to um, to resolve that one piece. That's and that's all we really want. I mean, I don't think we need to to look at all of these the terms again, unless of course we want to. But I don't I don't think that's entirely necessary. We've got I think that's different than what I heard from Mrs. Gregory. Ms. Gregory, I think you said mm -hmm. just to quote you. You want to reopen other terms. You said your words were reopen the negotiations and talk about other terms um, if I said that I totally misspoke I, I did want to, to another flag to reopen the negotiations in that I want to continue the discussion because we need to go past what we already have I am not at all suggesting that we need to uh, renegotiate what we have I was involved in these negotiations and I argued for them at the town meeting I think we should stick with them uh, and that we can just add hopefully a few tweaks and a little bit extra so that we can get it passed through our town meeting send this up to Beacon Hill to get our home rule petition so we're ready to go um, that and I'm sorry if I misspoke uh, no, no, it's okay that is that was not I my just want so to it clarify. So I could clarify yep. thank you the goal tonight was you were supposed to come here and make us an offer and I'm trying to make sure we capture what you're offering clearly because I don't want to pot ways this evening and us not be on the same page so Thank Mr. Masseri I would like to give Mrs. Manupelli an opportunity and I'd like to come back to you if you're good Mrs. Thank you. Mrs. Manupelli I just I I'm I don't think throwing it back into a subcommittee is the best option here especially because we're televised we're, we have members of the public here we have members of the public wondering what's happening with this so I guess I would like to hear right now while we're all together or while some of us are here what the creative options are that you are thinking could uh, address your townspeople's issues and I think resoundingly it was clear to me at the town meeting that they, they don't want a long-term deal they don't want to bind I think they said three decades three generations of townspeople to this contract with North Reading. So resoundingly, that was abundantly clear. So I'd like to hear what you have, what you think are the creative options you might be sure. able to address that those issues now while we're here. And, and uh, absolutely correct. I think the, um, 
I think it wasn't the term, it was the fact that there's, if something catastrophic yes. happened. Right. So there wasn't, in fact, the, uh, it passed 700 and some odd to 300 and something to go forward with the 99-year uh, deal. The only amendment that was made was for the, uh, the out opportunity. I guess I would, yeah. I'm, I don't mean to interrupt yeah. you, but I, I guess I would take that amendment in and of itself, which resoundingly passed oh, yeah. to as a statement that there is an opt out after 15 years we notify you're out at 20 so it's it is not a long term thing so what how would we what do you think we what do you have to offer sure. regarding yeah, that I, I guess sure. what do you have to Fair offer enough. us to secure this long term sure. for us and not have to keep coming back every 20 years and then five years after that and right. five years after that to go through this process which took five years to get to the IMA in the first place. Well, I think that's what the issue is, with me at least, what they're saying tonight. And that's why I went back and made sure I understood clearly. They're not, they're not prepared to, for yeah. us to do that. They're not asking to do that. They're asking for another town meeting, wait until it took April 30th. They want to reopen up the subcommittee meetings and, and have some kind of discussion about a form of a termination clause that they will negotiate. And then between all that, try to do some public outreach. That's what's being proposed. Can we, do you, can you speak to that? I think maybe give us some, give us what your thought is on it. Tell it now, instead of going back into a subcommittee and we're going back right back into that same process. It, <coughs> if I may, um, um, Chairman Prisco, what, what I would like uh, with regard to the summary of the ask, if you will. I was uh, hoping to begin, uh, you're accurate, uh, as you described uh, the request, um, a meeting, one subcommittee meeting, uh, preferably as early as Monday, to go over this detail. Uh, I'd prefer to discuss it at that level. I can talk in concept of what uh, we've been kicking around, um, but I have not discussed it with the Andover Board of Selectmen. We've discussed it as staff. I had hoped to discuss it in the form of a uh, the subcommittee format. I'm not looking to set up eight meetings. I'm looking to set up one. Um, to discuss it and be able to bring it back to your board as early as Monday evening if there's a willingness. I mean, we've worked 18 months uh, so far and I think we uh, are close and I think we do have something that I th would be worthy of consideration. I'm going to give you my honest opinion. I think the uh, subcommittee was an epic failure. I apologize, but it was an epic failure. Tonight is the night. A little disappointed we don't have all five board members from Andover here because Ms. Minyapelli is correct. All ten of us are prepared tonight to have this conversation. You know, I don't want to put my two subcommittee members through any more of time away from their businesses, their families, and their jobs and their things that they have going on because what we've done so far hasn't worked out because look at how your town meeting turned out. We clearly were on two different paths, and, and I'm not sure where the breakdown came from. But I will tell you, I will look anybody in the eye and say, the two members from our subcommittee came back to us on, during the day, phone calls, emails. At this meeting, they kept us so up to speed on what was going on. And when we went to town meeting, I felt so prepared and that we knew where every stone was and where it needed to be. We knew where everybody was on the same page. And then when we went to yours, we didn't see that. And now what you're asking for us to do is wait another meeting till you do it again on Monday. If that process didn't work then, I can't see it working on Monday. And we're here now. We gave up our time again with our families, and you gave up your time with your families mm -hmm. to be here. So let's take advantage of the opportunity, and let's figure this out right now. Because we're going to a meeting on Monday, and we're making the decision. And you've kind of painted us in a corner to really not work this out without your other two board members here, it's really difficult. Really, I would, I feel bad that they're not here because we're gonna have a conversation, maybe even agree on something, and they're not here. How's that gonna go? But, probably said too much. I had to be honest with you. So. All right, so um, I, I will tell you, or at least discuss um, in principle or in concept, um, what we have talked about internally or with regard to an opt-out clause. I will talk full disclosure that um, this has not been vetted by the Andover Board of Selectmen, but we can have a collaborative discussion. Um, we went back um, to the initial um, opt-out language that 
uh, was drafted at the time by Selectman McGregory. Uh, if you recall, it was back in August of 2017 when we were looking at any party that opted out um, would uh, receive or pay a penalty of five, um, five years revenue. Um, so we went back to that as a starting place um, and acknowledge uh, that um, the burden is greater on you if we were to opt out than it is on us, whereas we own the resource. You're, you know, we're the producer, you're the consumer. Um, therefore, we thought we could revisit that and be willing to discuss um, what the value is of uh, or the penalty, the value of the, or the amount of the penalty um, for each side, but if Andover was to opt out, they would pay X. If North Reading was to opt out, they'd pay Y, with Andover's opt out being more significant than North Reading's, with the understanding and the reasoning being that we own the resource. So that was the basis for where we were headed and what we would have talked about and presented um, in a subcommittee setting. So again, we're doing this in an open session and um, that makes things a little bit more complicated, but um, I would look for feedback from uh, North Reading. <laughs> oh, if I could add one, one more thing. Oh, and absolutely. We Mr. could discuss right. that this would kick in after um, a period of time. So the first opportunity would be after 25 years. Why 25 years? We could enter an agreement today between parties, the board of select, respective board of selectmen for 25 years. Mr. Schultz. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, maybe if I, if I may, if I could just throw out one of my concerns to you guys and if you guys could address what I think is a concern for North Reading is, let's say there's an opt out agreement in here and let's say it's pick a time, 20 years, 25 years, what have you, and water prices, for whatever reason, go up, and it's not working for Andover, so on, you guys opt out, and then we have to hook into the NWRA. My concern is, what is that gonna cost us then? It's already pretty expensive to go hook up with them now. <clears throat> what kind of protection can you guys give us where if we hit that, it, and the other thing with the penalty p p provisions are, you guys have twice the population, more of a tax base than we do, so you're able to pay the penalty a lot easier than we can. Meaning $10 million to you is not the same as $10 million to us as a proportion of the, your, your yearly budget. I'm just worried 20 years from now, we have to hook up with the NWRA. It's going to be astronomical what the cost is. What protections can you give North Reading where if we run into that issue, we're going to get some help? That's so, the biggest concern. Good question. Um, so conceptually, again, um, you would be s seeing some v greater value. So let's say, and again, I'm talking in theory, if we opted out um, or if you opted out from us, you'd pay a one-year penalty. I'm just using numbers. If we opted out, um, we'd pay you two-year penalty. So you'd get a year free of water that you could put towards whatever avenue you chose to follow towards an alternative water source. We'd really only have one alternative water source at that point, and NWRA. I mean, Unless it's 75 years from now, who knows? I yeah. mean, but. Uh, I, my point is, though, what is, I, I don't know what the cost of that's going to be. I mean, none of us, none of us do, yeah. obviously. But I don't think we have enough protections for our town in, in case that eventuality comes. And I understand your voters' reluctance to enter into a 90. I, I get it. Um, I'm just thinking of my voters. They, I've gotten so many calls, emails. Why is this taking so long? This has been going on for seven years. And I don't really have a good answer for them. Um, we're kind of back to square one a little bit tonight. I just, I, we would need some protections to, for the Armageddon scenario for us. I don't know what it would cost to go to NWRA in, in the year 2040. Um, and I don't think a couple of years of revenue is going to, it could be a drop in the bucket for us at that point. That's my concern. We're going to be in a real bind at that point. And that's what we have to protect against as our town. So I don't know if there are any common ground we can reach on that issue, but that is a big concern of mine. I'm just one of five, but that's my biggest concern about the opt out. Can I just this, this repeat, known, just so. to repeat to make sure I have, I'm clear on, on your statement? So your concept would be that if Andover decides to execute the opt out, they would pay the town of North Reading an equivalent in money equal to two years of water revenues. And I think that was just an example. That was an example. I mean, the, the, the original proposal was five years. X, how about if I just use X years of water revenue? Correct. That's the concept. Okay. In, in the and vice versa, if let's just say for the North Reading opts out, it would be half of X year 
in e equivalence in water revenue. Or X minus Y, and Y would be okay. something to be determined. Thank Correct. You. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, can I? Yeah, please go right ahead. I'm trying to be quiet, but I won't be quiet. So <laughs> I, I'm going I'm to ask for some indulgence here. It, it just, you know. Do I have to put you on the clock, though? No, it probably. <laughs> probably. Yeah, probably. Do the clock? All right, guys. Yeah, yeah, no, probably. But uh, first of all, I, I want to acknowledge the uh, effort that has been put in by Mr. Salafi and Mrs. Gregory and the town administration up at Andover, along with Mr. Masseri, town administrator, Mark Clark, our consultants, and, you know, a whole host. I mean, literally hundreds, if not thousands, of man hours have been expended on the negotiations just in the last year. Never mind back in 2014 and before when we were trying to execute a, a long-term agreement, uh, IMA with Andover prior to 2014, and we were unable to come to terms and conditions. Again, our board, and again, I can give you the historical perspective because I, I've been here a little while, um, and, and I'll move it up a little bit. I'll move it up to about 2013 or 14. Again, we, we had an IMA which had a, a expired with, with Andover, and we were looking for another long-term agreement. In addition to that, we had the same issues we have today here in North Reading, and I won't bore you with our issues or problems, but you know we needed to address our wells and our ability to produce water here. We certainly already knew that we couldn't produce enough water to sustain ourselves alone. They sell us 60, 65 percent of the water that we consume right now. Uh, our wells are aging. How are we going to invest? What are we going to do? We were looking for a long-term solution. Um, this board previous boards uh, have been in unanimity in relation to addressing this issue and what we needed to do. We approached Andover and said, we're looking for someone to produce and provide us with 100% of our water. We were told in 2014 that couldn't happen for whatever reasons. Andover couldn't, wouldn't, didn't want to, didn't have the capacity, didn't believe they had the capacity, couldn't, wouldn't, told us unequivocally. We said thank you very much and we executed uh, uh, an interim uh, municipal agreement, intermunicipal agreement, interim one for five years, which uh, was basically an exit strategy for both communities, uh, whereby the town of North Reading agreed to pay higher rates than we would normally have paid, recognizing that as we exit, the rate payers in Andover would have to absorb that loss, which at the time was about 22% of their revenue stream, and we would be exiting, and we'd pay a little bit higher in order to help them absorb that, and build up some surplus to wean uh, themselves off of us as we look for other alternatives. Uh, we have then spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, close to millions of dollars, uh, putting together a, a, an exit plan. And that alternative, an alternative plan, which is the MWRA. Uh, the MWRA, to their credit, has been extremely generous, extre extremely cooperative, and uh, along with the town of Reading, to uh, meet our needs. And oh, sometime a year and a half ago, you know, uh, through the course of getting all the required and requisite permitting, um, the DEIR was put out and sent to the town of Andover where we got a response saying, oh, wait a second, now we can provide you the water. You know, so we went, what's changed? You know, what's changed? Uh, in between, we've had three or four different town meetings where we've raised and appropriated money you know, to move the MWR route forward. Uh, all done in public and in the public domain and town meeting and all of that. So there's been no secret about it. But once the DEIR got to Andover's hands and they had to respond and comment, uh, and again, I recognize that there's been a change in the administration, uh, a slight change. There, was still, there are still three members of the board seated today that were there in 2014 uh, when we had this exit strategy. Uh, but it's like, oh my goodness, what's happened here? You know, we're going to lose 22% of our revenue. And how do we address that? And maybe we can now um, supply North Reading 100% of their water. So as a result of those comments, we have been forced to reach out and say, what's changed? And um, since maybe last January, February, about a year, year ago, um, subcommittee was put together and we've had a lot of discussions about that. Uh, and at we can, what we consider, again, last June, last June town meeting, we still did not have a clear indication as to whether or not Andover could, would, you know, or if we could come to terms with Andover to provide us with 100% of our water. 
so we, again, still went forward with getting the necessary appropriations to move forward with uh, construction projects, uh, building a new, uh, we appropriated money to purchase land, to build a pumping station, and we got all the necessary and requisite permissions and appropriations from our town meeting to move forward with the MWRA. And as I said, ad nauseum, and Paul Laura and Paul, you know, indulge me, North Reading's all set. If I said it once, I said it a hundred times. You know, North Reading was all set. We had a path, we had a plan, we were moving forward, and we were all set. And if you wanted to uh, offer us an opportunity, and this is what it was, it's a, it's a late 11th hour opportunity, you would have to get our attention somehow or another. And you did. This board opted to basically postpone for almost a year it's from a construction and uh, contract letting standpoint, uh, moving forward with the MWRA in order to properly consider uh, your proposal because it was worthy of consideration economically, physically. And we have a fiduciary responsibility that we take very seriously and we're doing it. We have, and we voted unanimously to postpone letting the contracts for construction and reading that ties into the MWRA because your proposal was certainly worthy of consideration to the extent that we risk increasing our costs. And I will editorialize a little bit now. <laughs> I'll digress from the facts per se, other than my observations of your meetings over the last couple of, last month or so, or since your town meeting, has been extremely distressing for me as a participant um, to see the discord that's taking place on your board and again, I wasn't at the meeting tonight, but I did happen to watch the one that was two nights ago. And there still wasn't unanimity on your board as far as understanding what the terms and conditions that were already signed up by four out of five members. And, and I'm sorry Mr. Kowalski is in here, and I'm sorry Mr. Landry is in here, and, uh, and I may say things that may offend them. It's not intentional. My perception as to what's occurred. Extremely distressing as far as the discord and um, lack of concern or unanimity on the board to get this done. You know, and what I hear from some of your members, and again, one member who's not here tonight, is that you know, this was one of the, the strongest uh, proponents of the amendment, strongest proponent of uh, renegotiating, renegotiating terms and conditions that were already signed and sent to us in the terms of uh, an extended IMA uh, is totally different than we already agreed to. Uh, and then I watched the two nights ago meeting, and he said, this means $78 million They end over This is unacceptable. We've got to get this thing done. I don't get it. There's a disconnect for me. I'm missing something here. Um, but that being said, this is a marvelous opportunity for both communities, and we determined that it was worthy of consideration. <coughs> we negotiated uh, an interim IMA which incorporated much of which would be included in the 99-year agreement because we made it very clear as to what our concerns were. And I'll try and be, I'll simplify it. If Andover opts out, you still have your water system, water supply, pump stations, and water for your community. And you have ratepayers who can absorb that increase in rates. North Reading, if Andover opts out, we can't flush our toilets, take a shower, you know, or have a glass of water. So obviously, it is a far more concern for us, and we expressed this to Mr. Salafi and Mrs. Gregory, and they heard us loud and clear. Again, wh what's happened on your side of the table, we, we can't, we can't help you. Uh, so obviously, the opt out, we opted out on, you know, uh, to, to make it quite simple. You know, we were not looking to opt out. We we're looking for a permanent solution. And I heard Mr. Kowalski say, oh, there's a 10 year sign up with the, with the MWRA. That's a perfunctory um, issue, administrative issue that doesn't even come before the local boards city councils, boards of selectmen, or anything else that's signed off by town managers, mayors, or anybody else as a perfunctory task. This is like, and nobody has ever been thrown out of the MWRA. So there is permanency there. 
We're not worried about it. We're not concerned about it. What we are concerned about, and, and I think we made it quite clear on the subcommittee, is the people that are sitting negotiating this deal for your side and our side are not going to be here for a long time, and some of us not for very long at all. Who knows? There's an election coming up in May, you know, so we'll see. Um, Could have but, a couple blanks in here. Yeah, yeah, no, no, truly. So, you know, what, we, what we're concerned about on our side of the table was we don't want our future boards to have to deal with your future boards. We want it very clear as to what the agreement is going to be and what it is, period, for a 99-year period. We don't want to have, have to saddle our communities, both communities, with exactly what we're dealing with right now. <coughs> that being said, in relation to your proposals, I think one of the first mistakes that's being made here is, and again, we didn't do it on this side of the table deliberately and intentionally. We asked our voters to trust this board to negotiate a long-term agreement, not asking them to negotiate it on town meeting floor. Not one aspect of this agreement was ever asked to get a consensus of the town meeting vote as to what they would be. We asked them to trust us to look out for the town's best interest for the next 100 years. And it was unanimous. It was unanimous. Because that's not the place to negotiate it. We have spent hundreds of hours talking over the concerns and the issues related to a long-term agreement. You can't do it in 20 seconds or 20 minutes on a town meeting floor. We asked them to trust us, to trust us, and they did. What happened up in your community, they started to negotiate it on town meeting floor. It's a loser, because once it's that issue, then it's another issue, and you know, someone doesn't like it. You know, like I heard Mr. Kowalski say, I wasn't even aware that we're gonna be paying North Reading $92,000 or $93,000 a year, you know, under the, IMA agreement that he just voted to extend, you know, for uh, the next two years or three years. Well, that was part of the deal. And part of the deal was the result of Andover's action in stating to us in 2014 that you were unable to provide us with 100% of our water caused us to go in a different direction, caused us to spend close to $2 million to get to where we are today to get ready to let contracts up. So as you come to us at the 11th hour, we stated to the subcommittee, and I'll state it here, that you bear some responsibility for the costs that we have incurred because of the decision you made. Mm -hmm. And you agree. That's right, it's the right thing to do. But we're talking about a 100-year contract, and we said, you know what? We can quantify right now $953,000 that we have spent because of a decision that you made and forced us to go down this route. <coughs> so pay us back over 10 years. And you can do it in the form of a credit on the water bill. It's not like count out the cash. Credit on the water bill. Keeping in mind that North Reading, when we buy 100% of our water from your people, it's paying 30% of our own bill. We're paying 30% of, of whatever you're collecting there. So we're paying ourselves back too. But again, it is more than a token gesture. It is an acceptance of responsibility for the actions that were previously taken that caused us to go down this route. And it was a good and fair agreement. But in addition to that, we voted unanimously and put forth for our town meeting last October, was it June? I forget. But June or October, an additional $300,000 to pay our consultants to analyze your system and your ability, doing our due diligence, to deliver what you said you could do. We're not just taking your word for it. So an additional $300,000 is being spent to analyze your system and to prove that what you're saying is true. And we didn't ask you for a dime for that. About 10 cents. You know, so for Mr. Kowalski, and, and again, I'm sorry they're not here. Um, maybe they're English majors and not math majors. I don't know. But, you know, we didn't ask for that money back. So it's extremely frustrating. Again, as an advocate for the discussions, the negotiations, the coming to an agreement, I'm frustrated that you're setting yourselves up to ask your town meeting to negotiate some of the terms and conditions through a vote or through a blessing. You can have all the discussions you want in public, 
but the vote can't tie your hands. It doesn't work. Because after all the discussion, and after the people who have spent hundreds of hours negotiating, understanding the nuances as to how the system works, what the delivery is going to be, well, you know, what an authorized is going to get. And again, some of your public thinks that we're getting a good deal. We're a wholesale buyer. We've got two entrances to Andover, Central Street and Main Street. From there on in, Andover owns, owns nothing and has no responsibility. We have costs to maintain our system. Our ratepayers are still going to be paying more than Andover's ratepayers because of the need to maintain our system. But that, they, don't, they didn't get that at your town meeting. They didn't, wasn't clear. It was very, it was clear that it wasn't clear to them. They think that we're getting a better deal. And again, Mr. Kowalski, I appreciate being up on the big board, being quoted, but you know, it was taken out of context and it wasn't true. But, but Mr. Earlier, the only thing I'll say on that is the only thing that was changed wasn't the financial model. It was the twenty. It was the outpiece, which I was know the what? Was, was the outpiece. There wasn't anything changed or suggested. I understand and that. And, and again, my interpretation of what occurred in Andover is yeah. different than some members of my board yeah. and some members of your I'm, board. Yeah, I'm just talking you know, about to me, what, what your, happened at the your, town meeting. Your town yeah. meeting agreed to a 99-year deal, yeah. and they wanted an opt-out some type of clause, deal. and that's not an unreasonable expectation, given their lack of information and knowledge and understanding of the, of our position and the need for our, need for permanency. So, and, and again, when we're talking about some of the details that you were just asked tonight to <coughs> make an offer type of thing in relation to, you know, Andover's, if Andover opts out, obviously it's, it should be more costly than if North Reading does because, as I said, we don't have any water. You still have it. Um, that shouldn't even be, I, I don't care about that. To me, and Mr. Masseri and I were talking the other day, it should be by mutual agreement. We're not breaking up this marriage unless it's by mutual agreement. Some catastrophic event takes place, it's out of our hands anyway. But for us to have some permanency, we have to have an equal say. You say yes, we say no, it's no. You say yes, we say yes, we're out. We say no, no, this is a wonderful thing. We can talk about it every year. But unless we agree, both parties agree, it's that simple. It is that simple. And to me, allowing your town meeting to negotiate terms and conditions is an absolute mistake. You know, now, we were originally talked about having a special town meeting in December, but you had some other issues that were coming up. Your other issues turned into 14 articles, which stimulated an awful lot of discussion and uh, an awful lot of uh, differences of opinion, shall we say. Uh, Huh? Anxiety is a word I would yeah, use. Yeah, yeah. So, a lot of it. if this were a standalone issue, I don't believe there's anybody in the town of Andover that's opposed to selling water to North Reading and keeping their rates down by 30 percent. Other than right. Mr. Kowalski, he thinks you don't pay enough, and you know you're below the Merrimack Valley, you know, average uh, 22 or 24 percent. So it's okay if the Andover rates go up 24 <coughs> percent. Obviously, he's not running for re-election. You know, but okay, if that's his position, I respect it. I may not agree with it, don't understand it, but that's okay. But really, I, I think if, you, if you're asking us to allow you an opportunity to clean up the language to mirror ours, as was originally proposed, it needs to be a standalone, by itself, quickly done, one water, one article warrant, and you can do it. Open it and close it, as opposed to what you did before. And I've got 14 articles at a special town meeting. We don't even do that. And we've, we've made some pretty silly mistakes over the years, but bizarre. So, you know, to me, we were going to have that in December, and we didn't get it. And I expressed my concern about that. Um, but respecting you, people have to make a decision. But as a result of making that decision, here we sit. Now, is this deal worth salvaging? I will say it again. North Reading is all set as far as providing long-term water to our community. We are. MWRA is just waiting for it. Reading's ready to go. Appropriation is in place. Nothing has changed. Is this still worth considering? Again, to me, the biggest concern now, the, the economics aside, and I kept telling Mr. Salafia even privately, it's not the money. Well, money is important, 
Here's the point. Permanency, excuse my language, lack, lack of bullshit going forward, dealing one board dealing with another board is more important. We need water. We're going to get water. We need to provide water, not for our current needs, but also our future needs. And we have two choices right now. You came in at the 11th hour and offered, offered us an opportunity. But we told you what our parameters need to be. We're ready, willing, and able to go to the MWRA. And we recognize, and I thank Mr. Kowalski again for doing his math, you know, that it's going to cost us more. We know that. I would suggest to you, members of the board that are here and the ones that aren't here, worry about the decision you have to make. Don't worry about ours. We know what our decisions are. We recognize them, we have them quantified, and we've already made some decisions. And the last decision we made was, let's consider this because it's a good opportunity, not only to get the long-term supply for the foreseeable future and beyond, but also at a more reasonable cost. But it's not the money. So you have to sell that to your community. You have to sell it to your board first. This should be unanimous. I don't get it, but that's okay. There's differences of opinion here every week. But there's a mutual respect here as far as our opinions and why we came to those conclusions. Uh, I think I've said enough. Thank so, you. It was articulated but very I, well. But again, I think it's still worthy of consideration depending upon what move you make and the timeline is extremely short. We have to move forward. We've already decided to postpone for an entire construction season our projects with the, with the MWRA. That cost us money. We haven't asked you a dime for a dime for that. We did that because it was worth considering. And now we get this stupid monkey wrench to get thrown in here, unnecessarily in my estimation. And Mr. Masseri. Thank you, Mr. Laird. So the way I look at it, tell me you passed the original article with an amendment. The original article takes care of the 99 years to the legislature. So it's this amendment that's the problem. And if, if you take that amendment out, have a special town meeting as soon as possible, convince the public to remove that amendment or, or create some language that nullifies it, whatever it takes from a legal point of view. Then we can continue the negotiations and deal with some of those issues. And, you know, what Steve mentioned earlier is, uh, yeah, we, we, can, we can put something in there that when both sides want to bring up an issue, they bring them up. And if they both agree, then we move forward with whatever it is. And I, you know, I think that's the right way to run this. Water is critical to the town of North Reading. And at the end of 20 years, you decide to, something's come up and goodbye North Reading. We better go back through all of this at a higher expense and hope that one, the MWRA will provide the water, and the town of Reading be willing at that point in time to allow transport of the water to the town. We'll dig up the streets. Right. Yeah. So that's the dilemma that we're in. And you know, as I said earlier, I've, you know, I've been involved with this for a long time, and it seems to me one simple little thing has to be done to move this thing forward. And if it can't be done, and it can't be done in a reasonable period of time because the rest of the board members have to agree, right, then we're just wasting our time. We have to move on one way or the other. Mrs. Minupelli. Is there any thought of that? I mean, I don't, I don't even know if legally speaking you can just simply go back with the same article you just went to and say, well, we're doing it without the amendment now. And I don't know that that would be resoundingly received based on the last town meeting. It's a possibility. We're talking through the uh, legal mechanisms now. And I'm going to just add a little one on this, too. And you talked about your little opt-out opt clause scenario. You know, to me, I'm not sure how you could have an obligation without an appropriation, how you could force us into a position of agreeing that we would pay you X amount of dollars and not have an appropriation. That means we would have to go and appropriate that, uh, appropriate that money and 
put it away somewhere so that when that rainy day comes, we have it. And you would have to do the same. I would assume it would have to be subject to. Subject to appropriation. You know, I mean, right. so no. just think. So I think now, you, now you're hurt. I, I think if you step back and just think about what you're proposing, you know, I think you, your common heads need to prevail here. And I think the biggest issue that you have is it goes back to you're not on the same page. And I'm not sure you're listening. You know, Mr. Valeri, that speech that he just gave was so accurate. But you know what? I've heard him say this speech before to you in this very room um, a year ago. You know, if I had to play the tapes side by side, the words would match up a year ago. Um, Mr. Mr. Schultz, yeah. you, oh, you all set? No, well, I, I was, I, and I was, I actually wanted to sort of clarify some of the, some of the, I guess, proposed options besides that being that that being suggested or Steve and Bob's suggestion. Opt out is only if we're both in agreement to opt out, but that that requires a you to basically go back to your town and say, would you do this again? Uh, I just don't understand why they would say yes to that because they just voted on it. But um, I don't see any what would be th what's different now that wasn't different back then. But in term just in terms of that sort of opt out penalty, sort of in exploring that opt out penalty as well, um, I I was I'm trying to clarify. Select woman Gregory, you're, you're saying, d and maybe all of you are saying we're not renegotiating that summary of terms. We're just trying to <coughs> figure out or sort out an option for that opt out, that non permanent solution for us. Right. We're not going to go back to the drawing board on all the terms that we had. We, uh, we actually, you signed and we actually approved or uh, voted to ratify here. Um, right. You're just, you're, just, you're just going back to your voters or potentially going back to your voters on that one issue of the lack of permanency that. <coughs> that you're trying to address through these creative options. Yes, I, we're not looking to renegotiate all of the terms at all. Um, we worked hard to get those, <laughs> and yeah. um, I, uh, I, I agree with them. I signed the, um, I think I even moved the motion when we uh, did it, mm. and uh, I think that we need to stick with those, but we need to address the issues raised by our town meeting voters, which as we've said, I think are in part because we didn't get the information out to them in the way that we needed to. Um, and we're, we're exploring many ways to do that. Um, but I think also that you've raised a number of issues that we need to discuss a little bit to figure out where we can, can go from here and talk to town council, who's at the end of the table <laughs> here. Um, so if we could maybe take a short break so that we could do that. Um, would that be something that would be Absolutely. acceptable? Absolutely. Yeah. If you're requesting a, a, a sure. recess, take a recess. Yes. Yes. Recess. No. How long would you like? Ten minutes. Yeah, ten minutes would be enough. We're going to give you fifteen. We're going to give you fifteen minutes. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a recess for fifteen minutes. Well, thank you for accepting my request to take a take a break. I think we're ready now to uh, reconvene. And and your opportunities. Did you have enough time? Oh, yeah. Yes. 15 minutes better than 10? I don't know. Yeah, 12 and a half would have done it. But <laughs> Good. Uh, with the spirit of negotiation. Yeah. So please, I'll like turn the floor back over. Yeah, I, I would, uh, Selectman Gregory has been taking notes from all of our meetings here, so we're going to try to get her to, to um, give you what we just spoke about. I think it's <coughs> Your time, we don't have to rush. I guess we needed more than 12 and a half minutes. That's okay. okay. Uh, thank you for giving us uh, some time to uh, figure out a plan. And here's what we would like to propose we've heard what you've had to say, and um, I I agree, understand your frustration, not to the degree because I'm a new arrival in this, but I, I understand um, and join you in, in some of it. Um, but what we uh, propose to do is uh, we have a meeting on Monday night and um, we propose to call a one item special town meeting um, where the only issue would be this. Um, 
and that on Monday we will the board will vote on this it'll be on the agenda which we will post tomorrow uh, and we'll be targeting a March 29 date uh, I don't think we can confirm tonight on it on the date but we can confirm that on Monday um, for the meeting and this would give us enough time to meet both the rules on the special town meeting and to give us some time to educate our voters on all of the things that we didn't do as good a job on educating them before we have a commitment to get this done um, and then we would have a vote on language that would give the board the uh, ability to negotiate the terms with you hopefully um, by the end of that meeting and we feel that um, this would be a quick way to do it but would also to address your issues as well as ours and would also give us an adequate time to provide the education to our voters uh, which we didn't do as good a job as we should have before um, and I guess what we're looking for from you is whether this is a acceptable proposal um, for North Reading to continue the discussion Mr. O'Leary just from the timeline that we established ourselves <laughs> Um, a few months ago when we said we would make a decision you know sometime in April I mean that sort of fits within the timeline and I know based upon our discussions the most recent discussions uh, at our board meetings based upon the frustration with what occurred at the end town meeting we we're talking about maybe making something a decision as soon as uh, this coming Monday night and again I don't have to tell anybody in this room this is a, a decision which is going to have a significant impact on both communities the next hundred years so you know I think to uh, provide and over the opportunity which is still within our April timeline and again the outcome of that town meeting certainly will uh, indicate whether or not there'll be movement forward or not uh, if town meeting doesn't support the article then you know then we have a decision to make uh, which I think is already we made clear as to what our position is so I, I for one would be uh, amenable to uh, providing the opportunity to allow the discussions to move forward because it's, it's a short short time period it's within the time period that we had already uh, discussed and agreed to and I say Mr. Masseri Mr. Masseri I would suggest one additional thing and that is if uh, they decide on Monday night to go forward with a special town meeting in the time frame give or take whatever days fit within getting a place to have the meeting etc uh, that uh, our committees that have been negotiating and talking begin talking based on an assumption that your town meeting will allow you to do what we would like to see done and that way we wouldn't be losing that and then you know, tell me he votes it down we know exactly what we're going to do and we'll still be within the April date now, that's what I would recommend I just have a couple questions when's your re-elections the 27th that, on that, that Tuesday the 27th so it's two days after we, we need the entire month to, uh, to, for education so let's think about this You'll have potentially two new board members with two days under their belt going to town meeting to support an article. So the rec recommendation would be for that because we'd have to have our FinCom book out. So we'd have to have that book out probably. I'm sorry, Alex, I can't hear you. Yeah, I apologize. Speak up. We would have to have a formal vote by the board well before that to get the finance committee letter out to our citizens. Usually that's done at least a week in advance. So we would, we would have to have that out and that board vote uh, most likely let's say the 17th or so of March to get to get it in the voters hands with a set of recommendations as part of the outreach that's you know just the customary mechanics of it 
Additionally, um, I would suggest that having the campaign going on during the month that we're trying to educate people will actually raise the awareness of the issue. Um, I suspect it will be uh, involved in, for example, the candidate debates and uh, things like that so that that will help people to be aware of the issue and to, to hopefully uh, come to terms with the particulars and understand what they're voting for um, on that special town meeting. I would hope that your candidates take the time to talk to subcommittee members to become fully informed as to what the discussion is rather than what we've witnessed right. at your public well, meetings we, we for current seated members who don't seem to have a clear understanding uh, as to what's taking place. Start to me, certainly, and I and explain to me as well. Yeah, so um, okay. I'm just, I, I understand what you're saying that you're going to ask your, the article's going to say you're going to give the board, the townspeople give the board the permission to negotiate the terms, but you're going back to your townspeople to say we're taking out the opt-out. You're, you're going to be telling your townspeople that, It's the right? same article that was yeah. in this prior town meeting. That's Before correct. The, I mean, what you're saying is correct, that we would so be rescinding would be the am amended article. Right. We'd be reasserting uh, the original article before the amendment. Um, and we we feel that if they had more information and understood the results of it, of their decision, that the decision might be different. It might be the same. I mean, obviously, we can't predict what it would what it would be, and we will do our best to get the information to our voters and to help them to understand why all five people on the board are in favor of this. Um, but you know, obviously, they can vote however they like when it comes to the meeting. So, what time's your meeting on Monday evening? Seven o'clock. So this is what I'm going to propose. We're going to make a decision on Monday evening. I'm not going to make a decision tonight because that's not what we, we agreed to do as a board. And I'd like to propose that we allow us to go back and have our meeting on Monday evening at 7 o'clock. And we, if you, if you could hold off on your agenda, this subject is till 8 o'clock, then we'll make, an, we'll make a decision between 7 and 8 on Monday, and we'll notify you. We'll take a a recess from our meeting to allow our town manager to call you, Mr. Flanagan, and let you know what this board decides. And um, so we have between now and Monday to think about what you're saying and what you're, how you're going to approach this. But I will leave you with my concern. My concern is that you'll have two open seats. You saw how your town meeting went with one person against us. If we have two people that are running for election that are mostly they could get elected, and you have two people on town meeting floor mm -hmm. that are only that are only going to be in that position for two days could really turn this into, uh, it, could, it could be a very challenging setting. So I don't know who's running. I don't know anything about the people, how they feel about this whole subject. But I just want you to, and I'm not looking for a response. I just want you to know my concern that I have, OK? I was at your town meeting, and I heard the people stand up and applaud when I believe it was Mr. Flanagan when you explained to them that if you do this, we most likely won't accept this, and they stood up and applauded. It's very, very concerning. So it's a big challenge, but I just want you to have my concern. Any board member wanted to say anything else? Mr. Schultz? If I may, I know one of the problems that I've had with this whole subject, and voters in my town have come to me with this, is they've kind of seen the articles and they've seen some of the videos of your last few meetings, and, and I'm trying to be fair here, but they've been pretty dysfunctional. And it's hard for us to, as a board, like, and I'm not trying to throw stuff, I'm just telling you what my thought process is. I think it's important you understand our mindset. Like, how can we negotiate with that when people are acting that way? So, I mean, it would be helpful when you guys do bring this up that, you know, it, it, some of your meetings have kind of been off the rails. And I, I it, that has been a problem with me personally and, and the people, like, how can you negotiate with that? So, I just, I don't, I'm not trying to throw stones, but I think, in fairness, I have to say that because it is kind of how I feel. And, how a lot of voters feel in this town. So, 
I'll, all I can say to that is that I agree we've had some civility problems and I would like to think I'm not a part of that and I'm doing my best and continuing to do my best to minimize that and to be as professional both myself and to assist the board in being as professional as possible and I would say Alex has done the same um, and that hopefully Monday was a exceptional circumstance and that we will be able to move forward uh, I think our meeting today the earlier today where you were present was um, a very professional meeting and uh, although Dan only participated briefly by phone because of work issues all five of the selectmen did support the uh, contract with North Reading to sell water so that that I don't anticipate it's going to be an issue between this group of selectmen if the uh, change in the board is a is a particular concern um, because we will at least have one seat that changes uh, on March 27th we could consider a date prior to the election uh, again we can't specify a date tonight because we need to figure out what's available That's and um, those sorts of things but we do want to make sure to have enough time to provide the education so that we aren't in a situation that we arguably were in before where we didn't have adequate background um, I would also suggest that at the, the uh, special town meeting because of another issue that was part of that meeting there were a lot of townspeople that were very upset and agitated which did not help the atmosphere of the entire meeting and I'm extremely uh, uh, confident that that would not be the case with a single issue involving the uh, water agreement between the two towns thank you so mr. Gilberto I looked in our schedule I didn't see our agenda posted but right. what time is our discussion for this supposed to take place so we were in the draft agenda that I forwarded a little earlier this evening we were looking at a 630 start time with a brief executive session and then going into open session at approximately 645 uh, and uh, between then and the beginning of budget hearings in 730 I believe the draft agenda called for this item to be taken up the, the issue of water wastewater so we can make a decision and then notify them before do you have other things on your agenda that evening that could Yes. No. No. Um, yes, we, well, we have night, a, we have a number of things on the Monday, agenda on Monday. Monday. So we yeah. we asked you to hold off on this subject until after we notify yeah. you. Right. I, d I don't think that would be a problem. No, that's problem. Uh, we'll, we'll just have to make sure our agenda reflects the appropriate yeah. times and so yeah, that we're. I haven't finalized the agenda times yet, so I can properly adjust it. Is there any more questions? Anyone from the audience that? Questions, concerns, any other board members? Mrs. Minupelli. I actually just wanted to thank you, Selectwoman Gregory and Mr. Flanagan, because you both did speak up at the town meeting, and you know that that's that was important and that that was relevant. And I also think that um, Selectman Kowalski was pretty vocal about making sure this uh, option to get out was included um, as a part of this. So. Is, is his decision different? I didn't watch the meetings. I haven't watched the meetings, and I didn't see the meeting this evening, so I don't know if he's, I know, I can understand we're all for a long-term agreement, but has he changed his position on that opt-out provision? Um, well, first of all, thank you, and I'm very much in favor of the argument, which is why I went and, and made the argument and felt yes. it was important yes. to speak personally in favor of it because I think it's a benefit to the pocketbook of every single ratepayer in town. And second of all, we need to be good neighbors. Um, we need to maintain a good relationship with all of our neighbors. And it needs to be hand whether whether or not this works out and I really hope it does um, I am glad that we're given the chance to at least make it clear that some of the things that were said by the members of our town do not re reflect the sentiment of the vast majority of people in town um, where we're happy to be North Reading's neighbor and I hope we can continue to provide you with with water as far as mr. Kowalski I certainly can't get into his head um, he has done a bunch of analysis on the numbers and has provided a number of Excel spreadsheets to all of us on the value of continuing this and how we need to make sure to enter into this agreement and that it's very important so
so I would suggest that he is on board to agree with to go forward with the contract um, as far as you know particulars of an opt-out um, I don't think that's I can't I can't speak for him so I just don't know but he did say strongly at our meeting today where it was clear that we were speaking about this issue that was raised by the voters um, that he was strongly in favor in uh, entering into an agreement and that it needs to be done so um, I uh, I think that he's going to be on board with it and you know I guess we'll find out next week <laughs> and Mr. Schultz was there tonight to hear that um, I would say that part of our deliberation, I think, on Monday would see if, even if there was more flexibility to compress the time. So, in other words, that 29th date is I can't, a, I'm sorry, I I'm said to, to see on Monday night, part of our discussion would be, could we even move it up if there's a concern about the election? The special town Because that's the special town meeting. So that's a valid statement, Mr. Briscoe? Yeah, because I, 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 total, I totally understand. I mean, we're only five people. Uh, there's going to be several hundred that vote on this. There's, you know, there's five votes here. But um, I, 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 you know, I respect that, and I think it's a valid, valid piece. So I think part of, um, part of our discussion on Monday night will be, is there an opportunity to move that up even further? Because and the only concern with that yeah. might yep. be that we, we want as much time for education as possible. So sure. <laughs> obviously, that's a really delicate balance. Uh, it is certainly a concern to have, you know, well, I'll just, I'll just tell you why I think it makes me a little more comfortable understanding that if you do it sooner, um, we know where Mr. Kowalski stands. I've been dealing with him since 2014 on this particular subject. And as you heard tonight from Mr. O'Leary, and we're both in agreement, we're here because a lot of it has to do with him. And he's never going to change his mind. And the way he crunches numbers, Excuse me. certainly. I've seen him change his mind just in the last two weeks. So he's capable of changing his mind, but I don't believe he's going to change his stripes. All right. I, I don't disagree. I agree with those. It's, it's and if he were sitting here right now, again, I would say I would say the same thing to him. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, and, and it, at least he's the devil we know. And, and that's to have a conversation point, right. about one person on something like this is, and I don't mean He that had a significant away. amount of influence yeah. Yes. several yeah. years ago and yes. did the other evening when you had your special town meeting. But a few years ago, we were able to work through that. The support of the community. He does. We just have to accept the fact that he does have the support of your some rate payers. Yeah. Well, well, I don't know about that. Hey, let's raise our rates 30 percent. They the certainly thoughts. cheered. So um, I just wanted to pass along my concerns. If there isn't there anything else, I think um, we'll take a motion to adjourn. And uh, you'll hear from us uh, hopefully well before 8 o'clock on Monday, the 5th of March. Okay. I'll adjourn. take a motion to adjourn. Again, uh, folks, thanks for coming down tonight. We really appreciate it. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Yeah, motion. Second motion by, by Mr. O'Leary. So All in favor? Second. Aye. 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 Thank you.